Welcome to Prophecy Truth Today. My name is Linda Cambique. I think we have a great Bible study today. The title of our study is Keys to Understanding Prophecy. We hope you get a blessing from this study. Can I ask you a favor? If you were blessed by this video, please click on the subscribe button and the like button. This will help us to reach many more people who are looking for this truth on Bible prophecy. Thanks for taking the time to view this video and God bless. Hello again and welcome back to Prophecy Truth Today. Today's topic is Keys to Understanding Prophecy. The first key is Know the Rules. Apocalyptic prophecy is really what we call end time prophecy. The word apocalyptic is a word describing the end of the world. You can't understand Bible prophecy without first understanding prophecy's rules. And the Bible tells us, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So to understand Bible prophecy, we need a valid set of rules to help us understand. Our God is a God of order. Consider the bumblebee. You know, aeronautic flight engineers say that it is impossible for the bumblebee to fly. Of course, with God, nothing is impossible. And consider the billions of galaxies out there, and they're all rotating around in their order. And what about the DNA that we have found about, out about in recent years? It's absolutely amazing that every living thing on Earth has a DNA strand. God didn't give us Bible prophecies without valid rules to understand them. I'm going to show you four simple rules today. Four simple rules. Rule number one is order. Rule number two, fulfillment. Rule number three, language. And rule number four is time. These four simple rules will help us to understand apocalyptic prophecies. Did you know that there are 17 apocalyptic prophecies in the Bible? There are five in the book of Daniel and 12 in the book of Revelation. Rule number one is order. Each prophecy has a timeline. The beginning point in the scripture starts the timeline, and the ending point in scripture ends the timeline. And the timeline events must occur in the order that they are listed in that Bible text. Let me show you a silly example of what I mean by a beginning point and an ending point timeline. Supposing you took a, a journey from Washington State to Florida by car and you're telling this story to your friends. Of course, number one is, the, is Washington State where you begin. And the ending point is Florida where you end. There are points in between. 
that you're going to tell your friends about. Let's see how rule number one, order, applies to the metal man in Daniel 2. Notice that there is a head of gold, a chest and arms of silver, and so on, clear down to the ten toes of iron and clay. It's easy to see that number one, the head of gold, is first, then number two, the chest, then number three, the belly and thighs of brass, and so on. God put them there in this order in the Bible, and they can't be moved around. It goes from the head all the way down to the toes. One can't be jumping all over the Bible, plucking texts from here and from there to create their own pet prophecy. Rule number two is fulfillment of the timeline. The prophecy is fulfilled only when all of the events on the prophecy timeline are met and fulfilled. This includes the order or sequence of events in the prophecy's timeline. Think of this rule as our vacation journey from Washington, D.C. to Florida by car, and you're telling this story to your friends. And of course, starting point is Washington State, and the ending point is Florida. You have a lot of stops in between. You're going to be going through Oregon, through Idaho, through Colorado, Arkansas, North Carolina, South Carolina, and finally the ending point, Florida. Your vacation hasn't reached its ending point until you get to Florida. Let's consider the prophecy in Daniel 2 again. The last point in Daniel 2 are the ten toes of iron and clay, and we can see that God has not set up his kingdom yet. So, number six has not yet been fulfilled. Let's go on to rule three, language. Prophecy language can be literal or symbolic or analogous, and it's important to reach the meaning of the prophecy that you are considering. First, you need to consider the content. Parallel language used somewhere else in the Bible can give you a clue, and if it's symbolic, it must be defined by a relevant text. When you are trying to determine the meaning of the word, you should first see if it's literal, then see if it's symbolic, and finally, see if it's analogous. Let's consider the word star in this text. I watched as he opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black with sackcloth made of goat hair, and the whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to the earth as figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. Notice that stars in the sky fell to the earth. Stars equal, in this text, real stars, because that's a very probable thing, stars from the sky following. This is literal. Let's consider stars in this verse. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are seven churches. Stars, in this case, are angels. 
and it's told to you right in the text. This is symbolic language. Let's consider a third example. We're going to consider the word smoke in this text. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss, and when he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. Notice the word like, smoke, like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. Usually that word like will tell you that this is analogous in its context. Let's go on now to rule four. This has to do with time. Prophetic prophecies may contain many time-related elements. Typical time elements are a millennium, years, months, weeks, days, hours, or even time, times, and a half a time. God uses two different prophetic timing formulas. Sometimes he uses a day equals a year. And sometimes God uses a day equals a day. Do we then assume that all time references mean a day always equals a year? Or is there a way to know when a day represents a year and when a day represents a day? Let me show you an example of the time rule. Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies in the wilderness. For 40 years, one year for each of the 40 days you explored the land, you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. Here, the 40 days and 40 years give you a hint that one day equals one year. God supplied the time formula that he is using in this text. Now let's look at Daniel's 70 times sevens year prophecy. Seventy sevens are decreed for your people in your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy place. Using the rule that one day equals one year, then 70 weeks equals 70 times seven, or 490 days or 490 years. The rule one day equals a year fits this prophecy. The millennium is a thousand year prophecy. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison. A thousand years times 360 days equals 360,000 years using the rule that one day equals a year. This rule doesn't make any sense as it is applied here. If we use God's other rule, where a day equals a day, then a thousand years equals a thousand years. This makes sense to me. 
So, the prophecy timeline rules. Watch my future videos and see for yourself how God applies these time rules during the upcoming Great Tribulation. A day equals a year is used prior to the Great Tribulation. A day equals a day is used during and after the Great Tribulation. Today we learned about four simple rules of interpreting prophecy. Order, fulfillment, language, and time. You may want to review this video several times in order to fully consider this teaching. Keep studying your Bible. Earth's time is running out. Jesus is coming soon. May God bless you and your family.